Okay, I'm just chilling in my library. It's day one, which I didn't realize it was day one because I'm just bad at telling the date. So it's 9.22 p.m. I'm trying to finish Dark Dawn before I actually start my first prompt book. I've read about 70 pages today and I'm hoping I can just like marathon and like crush it. But yeah, so hopefully I'm finishing this and then I'm starting Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in the morn. Probably not before I go to bed. I'm going to do some video editing because I'm just really behind. I might even reshoot some stuff. A lot's going to be happening. So wait for that. Okay, it's 10pm. I've got, I've got my cozy PGs on. I'm very excited about that. I'm still trekking through this. But I'm going to have a bit of a break from reading. It's just been such a hard day. <laughs> Not reading all day. But to play The Sims! Ah! So I'm currently playing The Sims 4. I accidentally created the Weasleys. Almost. And we're listening to something rotten in the background, one of my favourite musicals. Love me a good musical. So yeah, basically, we've got a bit of a story going on here. So, I started off with just Poppy here, who's like looking a bit embarrassed or something. Honey, are you okay? Anyway, she had a fling with the one and only Don Lothario. I'm going to pop the family tree. And... He got her preggers with a child, the first child, Perry, who like is 10 and rang up because why not? She then dumped his ass because it's Don Lothario. I think I actually made him part of the household and he like cheated on her. It was this whole thing. Anyway, so Poppy was single mum, just Perry. Anyway, all of the guys that are NPCs in the neighborhood are like uggos or have personal bad personalities or both. So I went and created this guy in Creator Sim and joined the family. So Alex, Alex Winston. So we started off with Poppy Forte, Alex Winston. He's a Forte though. He was not going to take his dad's name, screw that. So. I went, okay, let's have these two have some children together. Let's have all the kids and all the family fun. They then had triplets, all boys. What? And they are Thomas, Joshua, and Riley. All right, quick breakdown. Riley's a musician. He plays the violin. I've got to remember, these two have, like, a path they're going to take. One of them's an artist. And the other one would be something else. I'm not sure yet. And then I went, okay, look, they have four sons. I really want, like, a girl in the mix. Let's chance it with another pregnancy. Proceeded to have twins. What? But we did get a girl and a boy. So Poppy's not alone yet. So, since they were born in winter, I named the girl Winter. I thought that was cute. And the boy Cole, because whole winter Christmas. Even though it has a bad connotation, maybe he's going to be the rebel of the family. We'll see. Anyway, Poppy is the top of her career because we love a strong woman. She is a celebrity chef. On top of that, this lovely lady owns a restaurant and a bakery. I don't think the restaurant is at five stars yet. I'm still working all that out. Villa Bovine. Look, we're four and a half stars. We're doing pretty good. I'm thinking Poppy might become a mortal. Or at least I'm just going to like freeze her aging at adult. Either with cheats or like unlockables. And maybe she's just going to keep pumping out kids. I still remember, I will never forget, Sims 2. This is just a bit of a Sims rant. I mean, it's the time for it. I made Monica and Chandler from Friends on Sims 2 and I'm ready to get married and they had that life aspiration to have 10 kids so they did. I made a f neighborhood that was just their family and it was just like their main core household as well as their kids and their grandkids and the family tree was insane. Like that's like my goal playing The Sims when I'm playing with families is like how many generations can I get and like how many how many offspring. I just really want a really big interesting family trip. Anyway, at the moment, Perry's at university. He's been following in his dad's footsteps of being a bit of a fuckboy. But I think I've found his true love. 
He's like the jock and he met this pretty girl on the soccer team. Anyway, I will let you know when there's an update with my reading or singing. Okay, it's about quarter past two on the second and I just finished Dark Dawn. I've been reading it pretty much since I woke up, like took like mini breaks. But man, I've been reading this for hours today and it is exhausting. But I have to say that this was good and I enjoyed it. And the ending was heartwarming, which was unexpected. I didn't cry, but I did get upset reading this. Just, it's still very fresh. I'm going to try and figure out how much I actually read today. I think I read nearly 200 pages of this book. Oofed. Okay, let's just say approximately I read that much of it today. Yeah. I wanted to smash out like most of what was left before I went to bed, but it just got to the point where I was reading the same page section of a page over and over and it wasn't making sense and I was like nodding off so it's just what I had to do um I'm gonna eat some lunch because I've been putting off doing that so I could just finish this which I have I'll be picking up Harry very shortly and I'm gonna have to pick up bookmark I've got a few Harry Potter bookmarks I haven't actually used any of these yet for Harry Potter books, which is very exciting. The first one is I have this like hook bookmark. It's like a little golden snitchy. It's so cute. I probably won't use this one because it will fall out. In the Harry Potter exhibition, I have this bookmark that has like a little bit of like film in it of when Hermione is being all sad in Half Blood Prince. I also have one that I got from my friend, which is just like this Hogwarts cool one. That's I think. I want to say Ravenclaw because it's blue, but it doesn't actually say Ravenclaw on it. So, yeah, I'm going to go eat. And I need to choreograph some songs from Aladdin for my kids' musicals, as well as I'm going to go and highlight all my lines in my new script for my next show that I'm in. Ah! And maybe have a nap. I don't know. I have rehearsal tonight, but hopefully I can get through half of Harry tonight. That's like my hope, but I'm also not going to be too strict because I've done like a lot of reading today. My brain is a bit fried, but that's what it's all about. Okay, it's about 6pm. I am going to have some dinner, maybe put a bit of makeup on, and then I pretty much have to go to rehearsal. But I'm going to start Harry before I go and take it with me in case I have downtime at rehearsal. Howdy, so it is day three. I did start Harry Potter last night. I didn't get very far because it was very like start stop at rehearsal when I was needed and I was right next to the piano so it was a bit like a lot of sound going on. Anyway, I decided to read Chunk today and well, it's a decent chunk, it's a decent chunk. And yeah, so page 121, I'm up to chapter 7, The Sorting Hat. And I've got to say, it's been a long time since I've read this that I didn't realise how many, like, direct quotes the movie actually took from the book. And it just makes me so happy. I think I'm going to have to re-watch the movie after I finish this. And then after this readathon, I'm just going to think, continue with that. I'm going to, like, read, watch, read, watch, read, watch. I'm going to try and choreograph a bit more. I just get a bit stuck because I'm not, like, the most trained dancer. But it is for kids, so it doesn't have to be too complicated. If it's too complicated, they won't remember it. I will read more today. I do have a busy chunk coming up. I have work and then rehearsal straight after, so I won't get home too late. And I'll probably watch Drag Race with my mum again, because it's a great show. My dog is painting crazy. She's tired, but she still wants to play. Isn't that right, Kiki? Hey. Cutie. She is insatiable. But she doesn't tend to bother me as much when I'm in, in the library. I spoke too soon. <laughs> also, I'm just taking a little journey here. I hit up the old Kmart and I got this like bath caddy thing so I can read in the bath. Plus this like bath pillow with like suction on the back because my bath's not very deep so it's very hard to sit comfortably. Oh, also, I ended up watching a few episodes of Vampire Diaries. The drama. The drama. I love it. 
let me know if you've read the books and if you think they're any good. I don't know if I'd ever get to them. The boat might have just like have sailed by now. Alright, it's about 11am on the 4th and it's a rainy day so I've got like my blanket, my cup of tea and my book. I'm very excited. So once again, yesterday was pretty busy. I had work and then rehearsal, came home, watched a few episodes of Dry Grace, put to sleep. Hey! Put to sleep as I'm saying. So I managed to finish another story of Ghost of the Shadow Market, which isn't technically my TBR, but I just want to make my way through it. So when Chain of Gold gets here, I can just demolish. I'm on a page 148 of Philosopher's Stone. So I think I can finish this today. Yeah. Alright, hello. How are you? Shake. Good girl. Now go get the ball. Get the ball. You're so crazy. She just wants to play all the time. Mm -hmm. And her ball might be stuck. I'll have to go check. But yep, I think it finishes today. And depending how my day goes, I might have that bath with my new bath things. Ah! So here we have my bath set up with my new shell. I'm also going to try and stick this like there ish. We'll see how it goes. But yes, I'll be reading some more of Harry. Okay, it is 10 30 on the 5th. And I just finished my first book for the readathon. I was hoping I could finish this a bit sooner. But look, I've had a lot of work and rehearsal. And when I get home, I usually want to watch some shows with my mother. So today is going to be a reading day because I don't have work. I actually have a book to pick up from the library, which is the book my musical has been adapted from. So that's going to be cool. I will be trying to read that soon just because it is important for like my life, even if it's not for the readathon. But yes, I'm going to be starting Rune and Rising! I might, as usual, take some time to like play some Sims or watch some Netflix because that's just how I roll. But like, let's try and get a hundred pages today. I think I can do it. Okay, it's 3pm on the 5th. I've reached my reading goal. I am just over 100 pages. Let me check precisely. 102. 102. That's good. So I still haven't had lunch because I'm a bit of a crazy lady. And also just kind of being inert on the couch doesn't really tend to use up much energy. So I decided I'm going to make myself a nice bowl of semolina with a lint chocolate and mix it. It's going to be great. So I'm going to go to the shops and get some milk and I just felt like doing my makeup because I'm feeling fierce. I was gonna take the dogs and just walk but I think the rain's picked up. Hello, it is 10 o'clock on the 6th and I have been reading Ruin and Rising. I have been watching a lot of TV lately so we'll see how quickly but I'm on page 184 so just about halfway and I'm confident I can finish this in the next few days Tracking wise, I wish I was further ahead with how many books I've read because it's nearly the first week already. But like I said, I have other things to do and as much as I just want to read 24-7, that would A, drive me crazy and B, put me behind with other things. Stop. I'm just looking after the day. I'm going to read a bit, watch the new episode of Walking Dead and then I have some admin business stuff to do and then I'm going to work. So far, I am enjoying this. I just... I want more out of it, but it's still good. Okay, it is the ninth, everybody, and last night I finished Ruin and Rising, which was good. There's still just so much in this world that I want to explore, but I know there's also the gross ranking of scars. Hopefully that'll give me some more of what I want. And I started the colour purple, and I'm about 50 odd pages in there. This one is like really heavy <laughs> from the get-go. Which, like, I knew it was going to be heavy, but literally, it's a 
mention of rape on the first page. So just be aware of that. It's told in diary entry, so it's actually quite fast. And it's kind of slice of life tragedy so far. So I'm interested to see how we're going to get out of this situation. If we're going to get out of this situation. I know there's like a movie and a musical based off this as well. So... I'll be interested to check those out after this. It is a public holiday, so I'm just going to be staying home. I'm a bit sick, and I'm going to be reading, playing Sims, and watching Netflix. Yes. I also started playing like the Sims mobile version, and I got to say, like, it's kind of annoying because it has that whole energy system where you have to wait for it to refill to actually do anything. So I don't like that, but it is a lot more goal oriented than the PC version which is a nice change of space, space, a nice change of pace. So it is the 10th. I'm still reading the color purple, but I read like half of it yesterday and now I'm about like three quarters. I'm pretty confident I can finish this today. I'm hoping I do have work and rehearsal. I'm still a bit sick, but here's some fun stuff. I got, I got my, my purple book, my purple nails and my purple tea. Oh, it's all happening. Howdy folks. It is about 11 a.m. on the 10th. I finished the color purple last night. It was a bit of a slog because I was half falling asleep, but it was very good. The only thing is like, it was slightly challenging just the writing style at times. It was very like stream of consciousness and like there was no kind of distinction when dialogue would begin just kind of begin to sometimes I'd be confused who was talking but overall I liked it and I want to know more I want to watch the movie I want to do it all I have the Thornthwaite Inheritance which is the music the book my musical I'm doing is based on and the sequel just so I can like fully be in that world so I always do this to myself I just overload myself with books Yay, and I'm still a bit sick, so that's fun. So I have work for like two hours later today, and then hopefully I can just read. And tomorrow I have the day off, so I think I'm gonna go and pick up Crescent City, cause ah! But Cassandra Clare and Sarah J Maas are authors that I will just kinda like bump to the top regardless of how many books I have unread, cause I love them. Sarah J Maas more than Cassandra Clare. Let's open this bad boy. Oh, I want a bookmark. This is book depository. Oh, she beautiful. Look at that spine. Look at that spine. It's giving me like American money, Vegas, gold, luxury, realness. Oh, bookmark, bookmark. Relaxing. Love it. Love it. Okay, yeah. So I'm so glad that this is the paperback because I can't really stand hardbacks for the most part. It's not just as I thought it was going to be. I think it's more just that Crescent City's like a proper heifer. Like 800 pages. Alright, 592. That's, that's alright. Oh, we have a bonus story with Will and Tessa at the end. Cool. The more these books come out, the more I think I should just start getting them on ebook. Because, honestly, by the time the Shadowhunter verse is wrapped up, it's going to be like a whole bookcase just full of Cassandra Clare. Okay, so I had to turn the camera back on because I just opened it and the first page has artwork. Are you kidding me? Oh, it's like proper like cardstock as well. So, look, I'm s I've, I don't know about anyone else, but I find it hard to keep up with all the characters in Shadowhunter, so I'm not really sure who's who yet, but I guess it'll be a guide once I'm reading it. Hey everyone, it's the 12th, it's like quarter past five in the evening. Yeah, so it's been a day. I was just gonna go straight to the shops, pick up Crescent City and King of Scars and call it a day, but I got a bit paranoid hearing about Tom Hanks getting coronavirus and I was like, Tom Hanks cannot die this way, this cannot happen. And he was just saying they just felt fluey and they had it. So I was like, well, I've been feeling fluey. I don't know if I have it. I should probably find out if I have it. I work with children. I don't want to spread it. I don't want to get it. So I waited at the clinic, walking clinic for a few hours. I got to read a bit. So that was good. So five feet apart, we're over halfway. This is really fast. 
I like it, but it's... Somehow it's shallow and deep at the same time. But I am enjoying it. Like, it's a very kind of light, quick story, even if the themes are a bit dark. It's not as dark as it could be. It's still got a bit of ray of hope. And, like, the characters are fun. Zooming through it. So, anywho, and then I went to the mall. And so, main order of business was Crescent City, or House of Earth and Blood, and Priceline, our, one of our local pharmacies, had a makeup tail on. Which, like, I've been enjoying makeup more lately, so I was like, yes, please. Okay, so, I bought, I spent an exorbitant amount of money today, but I did get this beautiful book. I think this edition must be taller than some of the others I've seen people have because, like, she's thick, but not, like, ridiculous. Like, I think it's under 800 pages, or it's, like, at 800 pages. Yeah, it's like 800 pages on the dot, but yes. So I think I'm going to wait till next month to read this because as much as I just want to throw my readathon TBI out of the window, like, I shouldn't. And then I also picked up King of Scars. Again, I like my tall floppy paperbacks, so we did that. That was fun. And then apparently they've got, like, a renovation sale, so pretty much everything that's not on sale, like, already is 20% off. And even though that's not the biggest sale, I done took advantage of it, my friends, I tell you. So, I got the Stylus C as well. New angle because you were sitting on the books that I just bought. And so, next I have A Curse So Dark and Lonely and A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Camera. So, I did get this from the library and I already read it. I have this thing where I find it so hard if I've read something from the library to go out and buy it. Because I have to get really real with myself of, do I want to reread it? Not just did I like it, do I want to reread it? And I figured, I actually really enjoyed this. And I'm waiting on this one from the library and it's taking forever. So I'll just get the set and they're beautiful and I'm happy. This was very much like a day of like, fuck it, book buying. Like a lot of books that I'd ummed and ahed about, I finally got. Other than King of Scars and Crescent City. So next I got Elantris and Warbreaker by Brando Sando. And so I've already read this one from the library. I just decided to go and buy it because I keep thinking about it and I did enjoy it. Also, this is the next sequentially after Mistborn and I know there's a readathon going on this year to read all of the Cosmere, the Cosmere along. So we'll see what happens when we get to Stormlight Archive because I feel like I might just want to ebook those because they're hefty boys. But I just love physical books, but my bookshelves do not because they are running out of space. And then last little stack of books I got, I got the rest of the Red Queen series. So I think a year or two ago I read Red, Red, I read Red Queen and I really enjoyed it. I know it gets a lot of crap for being tropey, but like... I don't mind tropes. I had fun reading it and the ending plot twists were great. So I did try to continue the series on at the library but it had been too long since I'd read Red Queen. So I need these here together so I can marathon them and remember what's happening. I've heard Glass Sword gets a bit shallow but then it picks up from there. Either way I want to delve back into this world and I'm so much more likely to continue with the series if I just have the books on my shelf because I've already invested money so I should invest the time. 10. I've done bought 10 books today. It's fine. So now only thing left to do is peel off all the stickers which has always just been like a weird like I like peeling stickers off things. Also scanning them into one of my reading apps that keeps track of my unread books for me as well as adding them to my bujo. I'm thinking five feet apart either today or tomorrow I'll finish reading it and then next I have Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I know this is short it's like just over 200 pages. I might be reading something else at the same time as this like some fiction just because I'm a fiction girl. So ooh, I'm probably going to read Ghost of the Shadow Market because I want to get through it. So yeah, I think plan will be once Simsathon is over, it's going to be like, let's read Chain of Gold. 
let's read Crescent City and let's finish and let's finish reading the Grishaverse because I need to read the duology and King of Scarlets as well as just everything ever that still needs to be read. So I just realized it's Friday the 13th. It's like 11.20 p.m. but like whoa. So I did finish Five Feet Apart today so go me. It was it was nice it was fine. I don't see myself reading it again. This and I started the subtle art of not giving a fuck. I'm not very far in because I had work and then I went to go see a theatre show. So I have work in the morning. Fun, fun. But I'm going to try and read a bit of subtle art and then maybe well a bit of the Thornthwaite inheritance as well. We'll see how we go. There's just so many things to prioritise reading wise but also just other things in my life I need to prioritise over reading and it's just it's a struggle because all I want to do is just be reading and watching and consuming stories but also that makes me a bit restless guilty for not doing other things as well so it's technically the 16th it's just ticked past midnight and I'm just gonna update you of my reading I've been doing a decent amount today but also a lot of sleeping I've just been really tired Anyway, so I read a huge chunk of the Thornthwaite Inheritance. I was on page 20, now on page 192. So I'm hoping to finish this tomorrow before rehearsal so I can have all that info in my brain. And I've also been reading the subtle art not giving a fuck. Entertaining. Some of it is just telling me things I already know, but sometimes you just need things to be said a certain way to be like, True. The main philosophy I'm garnering from this is just choosing what you choose to be passionate and give a fuck about, as well as how you respond to things that happen in your life. So obviously we don't have any control over what happens to us, like ultimately, but it's what you then do from there that will either cause more problems for you more stress or ultimately lead to more happiness. I'm liking it. Some of it is hard truth. Some of it is like, mm, yeah, that's true. But yeah, so I'm going to read a bit, maybe watch a bit, and then I need to sleep. It is 2.50 on the 16th. I'm just making some food. But I did finish the subtle I'm not giving a fuck and the Thornthwaite inheritance. So winning. All right, so next on my list is again, but better. So I'm going to start that pretty much now. But also probably the sequel to the fourth weight. Even though I don't think that's what the show is based off. It's still just to have all the information possible. And I might play some sims. Hi. So. <coughs> my throat is dying. It's fine. So. It is the 19th. It's about noon. I have this panting dog that I've just been trying to tire out. With the ball. Which is her life. Ball is life. So anyway, I've been reading again, but better. I've just read like a giant chunk this morning because a thing happened. And if you've read this, you know what that thing is. And I'm really happy this thing happened because I was getting really confused what we were going to do with the rest of the pages because it seemed like it was like winding down. And I was like, oh, I don't like this. What's happening? And I'm like, oh, yes. Yes, so, so far I'm really enjoying it. I'm not a big contemporary reader, but I do like this one. I think it's really fun. I think you do have to judge contemporaries different to fantasy. Because they're just, they're giving you a different flavour. Being a long time viewer of Christine, I can clearly see a little hers she sprinkled in there. All the references to things that were popular in 2011 just make me so happy. Like that she's reading Vampire Academy, she's reading Shadow Kiss in 2011, as well as like Cassandra Clare, and I'm like, okay, this is, this is not even fiction right now. Alright, anyway, I do really want to keep reading. I want to finish it today if I can, have the day off, but I'm going to go do some filming that I've been putting off for ages. So hopefully you'll get to see that soon. Hey, so it is the 24th, it's about close to 3pm. And yeah, things have been a bit shit, but I'm pretty sure that's the case for everyone with this corona going around like madness. So basically, the kids' musicals I've been working on, the ones that you saw me dancing around to, have been cancelled. So 
that really sucks because a that's a big source of my income but also I've put a lot of work into that and I'm really passionate about theatre and just having my theatre projects taken away is shitty. So anyway, I had a little breakdown about that. I'm feeling a bit better. I'll just have to find ways to keep myself productive at home. So part of doing that is getting some reading done. So I'm over halfway for The Book Thief. I'm enjoying it, but I think just because it had been so hyped for so long, I'm a bit like, I like it, but it's not got the staying power of some of my other favourites. So we'll see. Like, I am interested, and it's really, like, fast to get through, and I'm interested to see how it actually ends. I can't see it being positive, but might be bittersweet. We'll see. So I do have a meeting in about an hour, which I think will be with some of my students and maybe parents to just kind of explain the situation, get a bit of closure, and hopefully not cry again. Alright, hi, it is the 26th and I just finished The Book Thief and I have started The Great Gatsby in the very little. So... I enjoyed The Book Thief, but as I said before, I felt like it was just hyped so much for so long and it's so many people's like favourite book that I enjoyed it, but it didn't strike a chord as deeply for me as it had with other people. That did change a bit towards the end, like I did feel more, but literary kind of novels aren't necessarily like my jam. So I, I liked it for what it was, but it's not my favourite kind of book. Already Gatsby, like I'm a person that struggles with classics and yeah just the writing style is very different to what I usually go for. Also I'm enjoying this tassel kind of matches. Yeah just even how it's written at times I think I just keep like zoning out and being like wait what? Having to reread things. So yeah I'm definitely going to finish this by the end of the readathon because it is a little, little one. It's like under 200 pages. Like, I honestly, if I think if I read this for a few hours, I could just smash it out. 148 pages, yeah. And I'm on page like 12 at the moment. Yeah, I mean, the readathon is not like my highest priority at the moment, just with like the state of the world. And I'm enjoying having this free time, but I'm also overthinking how to spend this time because I'm like I want to read, I want to play some games, I want to watch some things, I want to do some writing, I want to do exercise, etc. I might go rogue and just read some other things that aren't part of the readathon because I really want to get to Crescent City and Chain of Gold. Ah! Okay, so it is 1.30am on the 29th because what sleep? Who's that? So I finished The Great Gatsby today. It was something I could have finished really quickly, but I just kept putting it down and like doing other stuff. Um, I enjoyed it, but like literary classic fiction doesn't usually appeal to me that much. So even the themes, like they weren't explored in a way that excited me like I feel like it just scratched the surface but I guess it was just going for a bit of a short and sweet so I still had two more books to read for the readathon but I decided rather than trying to read those last minute and stressing myself I'm going to continue with the two books I'm in the middle of in particular which is Eye of the World and Ghosts of the Shadow Market. I was thinking about participating in the Owls next month, but I have a really clear idea what I want to read, so I don't think that's going to happen. But overall, I'm really happy with how much I've managed to read this month, and I'm hoping I can make a decent dent in this. Because the thing is, I need to make a decent dent in this before I go to Chain of Gold. And Crescent City, because it's just a rabbit hole that I'll forget about this. So, yeah. So, I'm still awake. I'm kind of sleepy, but I'm going to see how much I can read before I drop off. Alright, let's wrap up the Simsathon round three, shall we? 
So I didn't read every book, but I kind of knew that was going to happen towards the end anyway. Just as a visual, this is everything I read. Whoa! This is everything I read for The Simsathon in order. So I read this and I forgot to include it because I'm an idiot and it lives away from most of my books. Once again, like, I feel like I've read more than I usually would in a month. So it seems like Simsathon is, like, good for my reading, but it can be a bit hit and miss. I think my favourite out of the bunch was Again But Better. I was a bit cautious because I've heard mixed things about this, but I really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed the twist and it was just warm and fuzzy and funny and very Christine and yes, I like that it's something a bit different but still really good. As for a few other things, like, I would enjoy them but they weren't like my favourite. It's like five feet apart, like I was like, yeah, it's it's nice, it's fine, I just feel like if you're going to go for the same kind of premise as Fault in Our Stars, you've already got big competition. I think this is one that I'll benefit from a reread, just because there were times with like, the imagery where I was just a bit like, what is happening? Watching the movie kind of helped. It might have just been the writing style, but I got the imagery and the themes and the symbolism so much more from the film. So I think that's a bit, a bit on, you know, Fitzgerald, a bit on me. I think I interpreted the characters a bit different than they were in the movie, but I enjoyed the portrayal of the film. The Leonardo DiCaprio, Baz Luhrmann one. I'm so late to the party with Grisha, and I enjoyed it. I just don't get the super hype about it. Even the world, like I'm not that excited by the world. I don't think it was that in depth. I always had to look back to the index in the front, like even with the last book because I kept forgetting what the different orders of powers were. I like it. I just kind of wish the books had been longer and more. Because it had like substance sprinkled through, but I just kind of wanted to dig deeper with some of that stuff. Like I didn't care as much as I could have about the characters. Uh, I don't really know how many points I earned for the Sims-a-thon. I don't really care. I'm just glad that I read how many? I read seven books. That's good for me. I nearly became a full doctor, but that's alright. Let me know if you've read any of the books I read, what your thoughts were, if you joined in on The Sims-a-thon. Let's talk about books, and I'll see you next time. Bye.